Um, I think we can officially start. The others can um, join along the way. Um, so thank you everybody for making time and joining us on the second gathering that we are having um, this year. Um, and we are actually today um, going to be hosted by Kahiso Trust, who serves as one of the partners um, for the support partners for the um, Towns Action Network, which is TAN, an action um, and um, a learning and support action oriented um, network that is focused on the regeneration of our small towns. Um, and mainly a lot of these gatherings are an opportunity for us to kind of share some of the learnings, insights um, on how and the various approaches um, that we kind of take within the spaces that we are, particularly amplifying what change makers are doing as a way of kind of regenerating and reigniting um, the, the small towns um, regeneration in their spaces. And last time we were look, we were focused on the role of active citizens, whereby we had um, um, Restuare, as well as Nahiso, um, as well as Salga presenting and sharing what kind of role um, do active citizens play. And today's um and today's um topic is on radical collaboration for active citizenry. Um, all of these gatherings are mainly looking at action for accountability. And then the main highlights for today are going to be looking at how the community of Senegal has healed racial violence through joint action. Um, apologies about that. I hope you can hear me. Um, the second one is healing social rifts in Phuket birth um, through community events. And the third one is unmuting civil society through radical collaboration. Um, so I'm quite excited for this particular gathering and I'm going to hand over to Paul to then take us through um, the rest of the program and agenda. And I'll stop sharing my screen now. Thank you, Noel, for that introduction. Yes, welcome to our guests and welcome to the network uh, members. Um, I just want to sort of recap on the last couple of weeks, um, or in fact, the last three weeks from a Kahiso perspective. Um, we hosted a, um, some time ago, we hosted a, a, a Active Citizenry Get Involved campaign. Um, and that we sort of ended off with a, a breakfast and a blog with key government officials um, and civil society officials to talk about radical collaboration. And at that breakfast, the, 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 uh, the, the census was the, that um, um, people need to come together. And everybody agreed, both government and uh, uh, civil society, people who attended that breakfast and spoke on the, on the importance of collaboration as a means to rebuilding our towns in South Africa. Uh, subsequently, and that stuff will be shared at, at some point, subsequently, I was invited to present at the Solga conference uh, last week on Friday, and we were given a slot with a panel discussion uh, of senior officials from Solga and academics around the country, and, the, and it was really around the Makana case study on collaboration. And for me, the presentation was one thing, but the sentiment that followed was quite interesting. There seems to be a growing awareness and willingness of government and political officials and administrators to start thinking about collaborating. And, uh, and this has been reiterated um, throughout um, the projects that we're doing in the small town rejuvenation strategy with the site plan. Um, we seem to be uh, see gaining momentum in both all three towns where um, citizens and the municipality see the value of collaboration. And I think we mustn't underplay the important role that dialogue and collaboration provides us to start building relationships and narrowing the gap between civil society. But the biggest question that's come out of this whole process is um, from civil society and from community is how do we get involved? We want to get involved. How do we get involved? And I'm hoping from our, our couple of guests today, uh, which I've had personal experience of their initiatives in both Senegal and uh, Piketberg, um, that they can share their story a bit with us. And maybe their story will, will, uh, will 
will give us some sort of insight into how we can get involved. And so that also encourages us and enables us to take the next step in our communities because we have to understand that the agency for change remains with us, no one else. And it's how we pitch up every day that will make the difference um, in terms of our attitude. So, and we've said this many a times, there's two phrases I want to quote here. One is we need to connect before we start dealing with content. And the second phrase is, do we want to be part of the problem or do we want to be part of the solution? And I think from our two stories today that we have to share, and I, and I look forward to the little discussion that goes with it, hopefully we'll get some answers to that question. So with, without further ado, I think I'd like to uh, invite John um, to share his sto a story from Senegal. And then that story will be followed by uh, uh, Marie from Picketburg. Um, uh, we, do, we don't have an, uh, an update this time. The person that was going to give an update on unmuting civil society is unavailable. They've fallen ill. Um, so hopefully next time we can maybe bring that uh, to the table because Kahisa hosted a, a national civil society conference at the same time, at the same venue that Salga was holding their uh, conference and really uh, trying to get civil society to collaborate and uh, and uh, come together in order to campaign and advocate for change within government. So John, welcome from, from Senegal. Thanks uh, for giving us your time. John has, has wears multiple hats. He is very involved in the in the Senegal Matua Bank Community Forum. Um, we've been working with him quite extensively. And after hearing his story, I was exceptionally motivated by what can be achieved even in the most dire circumstances. And so, John, I think, please introduce introduce yourself and uh, share your story. Uh, once you've finished, I'll show you a little video of uh, the Senegal Matubeng um, Community Forum progress. Thanks. Thanks, John. Welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Paul and Nobu, for having me and, um, you know, contributing to uh, what I think, uh, what I called a revolution uh, without bullet of community uh, standing up and taking responsibility to really become the change in the communities which they are planted in is such a, a privilege for me um, that I can be part of um, those citizens that um, can play their bit, can, can do their bit in really healing our nation, uh, but also uh, bringing hope to our communities. Um, the story of Senegal um, is really the story of hope. Um, and I think we were fortunate enough that um, we were granted an opportunity um, to begin to uh, facilitate a process where the community can come together a very strange opportunity that was presented to us in 2020 uh, on the 16th of, of, in fact, on the 6th of October, um, through the death of a young farm manager by the name of Brendan Horner, uh, who was murdered, uh, brutally murdered um, on his farm that he was working on. And that death of that young man um, actually brought the whole um, cry of the farming community on the tipping point. And, um, you know, on the 6th of October, we had a solidarity march that was organized by um, our local farmers and some of um, uh, farming uh, community leaders around in the free state. Um, a march that was really uh, supposed to be um, peaceful, uh, actually became uh, very violent. As we all know, we saw it, it was all over in the news uh, where the police van was set to fire and um, the court precinct was actually um, damaged. And out of that situation, um, I felt a personal responsibility as, as, as not only the, uh, the resident of that small town of Senegal in the free state, in the Eastern free state, but also as a citizen in South Africa, um, growing up um, seeing how um, incidents like this have actually 
um, divided communities directly and indirectly and caused a lot of damage um, on, on their paths. So I took a personal responsibility to, um, to really start a dialogue and conversation uh, between the leaders, the local leaders there in Senegal, which I called for a meeting after I've come back to, to that um, unfortunate situation. And for me, the first miracle it was when all of those leaders, and I mean, when I talk about leaders, is your political leaders, your EFF, um, DA, Freedom Front, ANC, and, and some of the pastors as well, and also uh, those who are um, on a farm, farming community security and all the leaders relevant. And for the first miracle for me, it was when all of them said, listen, um, we really want to be part of that meeting that you're calling up. Uh, we met um, the second day after the incident. And I really just had one thing in my heart um, to challenge these leaders and say, um, you know, something has broken in our community. In fact, there has been, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, there's been a, a, so many things broken in our community, but now uh, we, we've, got a, we've got an emergency to attend to. What are we going to do as leaders? And, you know, when you call meetings like this, you, you always think just this is going to, these are leaders and they're just going to come with solutions. But unfortunately, to my surprise, um, it was it was it was really um, uh, it was almost like I, I opened a can of worm because they started attacking one another. Um, obviously, with all the issues that we have as a community, um, I remember one of the EFF leader actually saying that, yeah, no, um, I mean, you will have this kind of deaths happening on the farms because the farmers are mistreating the workers and the farmers were also defending themselves. And, but suddenly uh, I can vividly remember um, when that EFF leader also come back and say, but we do have a responsibility to take because this is our community, we live here. So we need to find a way. And that's how actually the whole um, a Senegal Matwabin Community Forum actually was birthed out of that meeting uh, where we decided, you know, there are so many things that, dis that um, uh, divide us. We can spend the whole day talking about our differences or we can actually identify things that brings us together. And 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 in that meeting, um, I I was inspired to share with them the concept of unity projects, uh, which I believe that it was one thing that could actually bring the two communities together um, to identify anything within these two communities that. Um, really affects both communities. And at that stage, and I believe even, even, even now, um, the, 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 the service delivery is one big thing that everybody is actually concerned. Um, the portals at that time in Senegal and, and Matwabing, it was one of the things that people were affected uh, because the road, especially the road that connects um, Sienegal and Matwabing, that road was um, invested with potholes. It was almost impossible um, to travel on that road. And, and those are the things that we started to look at and to say, um, how can we unite around these common problems and you know, co-create together? And, and come up with creative solutions to, to solve these problems. And I remember during that time, um, because what had happened there in Senegal, um, it really caught a lot of people's attention, even the, um, the Human Rights Commission um, provincial leaders, they came down and they said, listen, we need to start to have a, conv I mean, um, uh, we need to have a dialogue we need to talk about uh, the race issue. And we felt that at that time, it was not the right time to, 
to directly speak into those issues that divide, that's going to continue to divide us. And we did give them uh, an advice to say, listen, um, if you really want to bring these two communities together, you need to find something else. You're not going to talk about race. You're not going to talk about uh, politics because it's gonna it's gonna drive the wedge further between these two communities. They said no, uh, we know what we're doing. We've been doing this uh, for a long time. We said okay, we bless you. Go ahead, do it. And um, unfortunately, that meeting fell uh, fell fell over because um, people the emotions were very high and people could not uh, really work together and to talk about those issues because those are very um, sensitive issue. If you're talking about race, is it becomes a very sensitive issue, and especially now in South Africa, because um, you know uh, uh, previously um, the race the race conversation was only directed to one um, race in South Africa. It was always you know the black people against the whites, but now that conversation has changed very much because. Um, a lot of people can also say, listen, we are also victims of, of racial um, uh, laws and policies that segregate us as white people. So it's very, it's very uh, complicated conversation to have. Um, and we, we really shied away from that, even though uh, that was like the big elephant in the room. But what we have actually discovered um, uh, maybe I should also share that um, after that meeting, before I can go to the solutions, after that meeting uh, that we had, we were so happy and excited and to say, you know, finally, we have agreed on something because I remember after that meeting, we even took some photos and we agreed that we were going to meet over a braai and people get to know one another. And in fact, that is actually the the famous line that um, some of the journalists used to say, um, the Senegal community actually united around Bri. So that was actually wonderful because we know that uh, Bri and rugby is one of the things that unite us. Everybody's doing a Bri, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. Everybody is doing Bri. We, as, as Black people, we're doing our Chesanyama. We love our Chesanyama. So, um, but that evening uh, when I got home, I watched the news and I heard um, um, the EFF leader, Julius Malema, saying um, they're coming down on the second, uh, I mean, on the 16th of October for the second appearance, the court appearance, and they're going to paint Senegal red. So now you've just had this wonderful meeting and for the first time in, in Senegal, um, you have black leaders and white leaders um, talking about how to bring a difference in their town, how to collaborate. And now you have this situation where the whole thing now has been politicized and you, you're you going to have a, a, a standoff, a, possi a possibility of a standoff um, of EFF and the farmers, because when Julius Malema said he's coming, we knew that the farmers were also going to come because, I mean, already they have demonstrated, you know, what they are capable of doing. And that was a situation that called us to, to now take our collaboration and mobilization on another level. It was now bigger than just having a group of leaders talking together. Uh, we needed to include the community, and that's where we called um, uh, a day of prayer, praying for peace, and we invited both communities. We uh, we met in in one of the showgrounds there in Senegal, and um, and of course we also had a lot of people from everywhere, you know, standing with the community of Senegal in prayer and just praying for peace. And I can just share even this testimony. I remember um, driving uh, from, from that meeting, that prayer meeting on that day, it was around, I think it was on the 8th when we had the meeting, the prayer meeting. I remember driving from then, I, I overheard a conversation um, between two ladies and the other one was telling a friend and said, 
I hear that next week, um, Julius Malema is coming on the 16th of October and he's gonna paint, he said he's gonna paint cynical red and um, there is actually a possibility of civil war. Uh, but she also said, I wonder if that prayer will work, you know, where the community came together. And um, by the way, I'm also a pastor. That is also uh, what I do. And I just realized that, you know, um, will this prayer work when people come together and they pray for peace and they demonstrate that they want peace? And I just had to believe that it will work. And on the 16th of October, uh, maybe just to share how serious the situation was, um, I woke up at three o'clock. Um, with other people, we were already there and we were doing, um, you know, um, side checking where the EFF is going to, um, they're going to be, to be placed and the farmers. And of course, we were also just praying, continue praying. And I got to see the first bus of the EFF supporters coming in and some of the uh, uh, farmers back is also coming in to Sienegal by eight o'clock. 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, around there, 10 o'clock, the whole Senegal was actually painted red and khaki. It was red on the other side and it was khaki on the other side. But it was so terrifying because these were not just about 5,000 people, close to 5,000, I'm speaking under correction here, um, but close to 5,000 people converging there in the small dorpy of Senegal, not to come for not coming for a party or a function or an event of any sort, but ready and heavily armed for war. And that's how tense it was. I mean, people were heavily armed with rifles and all sorts of weapons you can think of. And, and, and I look at that situation and I realize that, you know what, if something would happen here, this will be the first launch of the massive civil war in this country. And, you know, throughout the day, there's so many things that happened. And by the way, Paul, the heat, it was, it was so hot on that day. Uh, yesterday, it was so hot in Senegal. It actually reminded me of how hot it was that day. But anyway, um, you know, the miracle that happens that happened there is that by six o'clock, I was also there and I remember seeing um, the last bus of the EFF supporter driving out of Senegal, some of the buckets of the farmers that were there driving out. We found a bloodshed, we found a bullet shot, we found any window broken, nothing. And I remember the worry or the question of that woman who says, will that prayer work? And um, I finally saw that, you know what, it really worked. And it showed me that when people come together, when the community come together and they believe they unite around something, something will happen. A change will, will become tangible. And this even goes beyond, you know, beyond just community coming together to pray. But it also means that if the community start to come together, working together to rebuild their town, that town will actually be a different place than it was before the community actually held hands. So that for me was something that I took. And finally, we had our first meeting of uh, Senegal uh, Matobin Community Forum which was the forum that was formed out of the need to, number one, to unite the communities, the two communities, number two, to, to build a social cohesion, not just coming together and uniting and talking about, you know, the bad experiences of apartheid or whatever, but to say, you know, what can we do? We are here. We are all affected by service delivery. We all moan over, you know, ASCOM. We all complain about crime and all of these things that are happening in our community. What are we going to do about it? And that's how the, the Senegal Matobin Community Forum was formed. And we actually adopted a very simple 
uh, approach or me methodology, um, which we call C CRPP, clean, repair, plant, and paint. Clean, clean the environment, you know, go for the low hanging fruits. Don't, don't, don't go for the things that are expensive. That's going to cost you a lot of money. That's going to cost you to go through, you know, the, the whole red tapes and stuff, but clean your environment. I mean, a town like Sienaco, if you can clean that town, just, just cleaning it, even without just filling up those portals, if you just clean and you pick up the papers, you deal with the dumping sites, just that alone, uplift can make such a difference in a town like that. And that's what we, we decided to do. And we said, um, let's clean both Sienakal and Matwabi. And the beautiful thing is, we started actually with a stadium that is between Sienakal and Matwabing, which actually connects both communities. We say, let's start with that stadium. Let's clean the stadium. We started with about less than 20 people when we started the project. And it, it had such an impact in the community, both communities, that our second project, when we started now cleaning you know, the parks in town. We had so many people. We had about, you know, 200 people that joined that day just to clean up the parks. And the beautiful thing is that, is that some of the people in the town that they have never been in the township, they now had an opportunity to go in the township and to experience how people live. And some of them, you know, had to pick up the nappies um, that they didn't even, <laughs> the mess that they didn't even cause. And the beautiful thing about it is that as people started working together and solving a common problem, so now this uh, natural thing that happens, that those relationships, they naturally fall without being forced. And one of the examples of those uh, relationships is that, and uh, this is for me a wonderful thing, um, uh, a relationship between a taxi boss by the name of Petres Minyato, who is the chairperson of the taxi association in the district, and and between the other uh, the other gentleman by the name of Gil Baker. I mean, Gil Baker is he's got a farm near there in in Sienegal. He's also the professor in the University of Pretoria. He's African as it gets. He's a Burki Sienki. And Minyato, he's, I mean, he's a, he's, he's a, he's a township guy. He's, <laughs> you know, he's a taxi, he's a taxi boss. And to see the relationship that they have that formed as a result of the community working together, that is always for me um, a wonderful side to see. And out of that, um, to cut the long story short, out of that, um, that that unity, those unity projects, we were able to fill up um, close to four thousand portals in Sienegal in twenty in twenty twenty uh, between twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one. We managed to remove a lot of dump inside. We put in um, you know garbage garbage bins uh, both in the township and also in towns in the parks. Uh, we painted some of the some of the buildings there, and I mean today, if you come into Sienegal, you look at how Sienegal looks. Yes, all of those portals. I mean, Paul, you were there. All of them are, op are open, <laughs> so we will have to actually do something about them again. But when you drive into Sienegal, you you really can feel that there's something different about this town. It's more clean now. And because we've started doing that, even the municipality started taking responsibility. I mean, now every day, I mean, almost every day you've got municipal people working there in Sienaca. And recently um, we also had a, a lot of land sponsoring us. Paul, that swimming pool is now fixed. You and Estelle, when you come, you must bring your swimming costume. <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a swimming pool working there. I mean, that swimming pool, has been standing there for almost 30 years. Can you believe it? 30 years. And that swimming pool was becoming a problem in the community because a lot of drugs, um, you know, the youth was using that place 
for drugs and some of the, the young girls were raped in that swimming pool. But today is a testimony. Uh, I mean, last week we were opening it and we had a we had a whole show of CakeNet and we're actually airing it recently in, on, on CakeNet. Uh, what a testimony that has become of Sienegal, a town that was described as a racist town, but today it has become a beacon of hope, a model for other, other towns. Of course, we still have a lot of challenges and that's why Paul and Estelle are there <laughs> to help us. We haven't actually arrived, but at least, you know, I think that has actually demonstrated how far the collaboration between communities can actually go. So um, that is the story. We've got a lot of story to share, but I have to put a comma, I mean, a, a full stop for now. Thank you, yeah. Paul and, and, and Nobo. No, John, that was a, that's a wonderful story. And if anybody is wondering how to get involved, um, it takes it takes one person to really create this massive snowball that gains momentum, and uh, through a bit of commitment and and tenacity, um, and if there's real purpose involved. So, John, you're an inspirational leader. Um, and what I want to do just before we get to questions, Nobo, is uh, um, in Senegal, we uh, Estelle and, and myself uh, are part of the implementation team for the small town rejuvenation strategy. And so I just want to share a quick video of um, of what the the Senegal um, community forum looks like at the moment. Um, they've they've adopted um, they've adopted the implementation strategy and hopefully at some point we can get the municipality to match the energy and excitement and purpose. And that's really our task and our challenge and also the community forum challenge. They obviously adopted this model. Um, and this model is really about developing two sets of stakeholders to come together and design and resolve for local problems and then to take action. And so we think that this is going to become something that's really important going forward. So if there's, if there's community members out there, build a community task team, select a task team manager, and encourage the, the municipality to do the same. Um, I'll, I'll let the video play now. Um, Paul, I'm not sure if others are experiencing the same thing, but I can't hear the video. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing then. Um, and then I'll reshare. Um, audio settings. Um, sorry about this, guys. Um, Do you know where what I need? Uh, let me go more here. Share sound. I think that should do it. Tell me if anything changes. The present plan is very much important. You bring things together. But all those programs that you bring together, they are not going to happen at once. Uh, we thought, I thought that if I can bring so many programs, they can happen, but we need to prioritize. Uh, what shifted for me uh, when we started this process with the STR team was my, was my perspective on how I viewed the town and how we could actually change it and strategies that could be used and how we could actually make our town and location a better place. I do think the facilitators make it possible for us to work as a community group with the municipality and, and it's even helped us to join some of our forces here in the communities, the various communities in Sienekal and Matwabing.
This process has, has shown me so many things, uh, how to communicate with people, how to start a project, and then how to work with other people. Communication is very much important in this program that we are doing and to call all the people involved that they should be involved in whatever you are doing so that the program can be a success at the end. Alone, one cannot make it to, to work. You need other partners. Yeah, the, the team's been really good. I think it's a diverse team, um, not just a diversity of cultures, but also a diversity of talents and skills and experience, which really has been helpful. Um, and I think that's the right team to take us forward. If I had to take one thing that I love about the town, it's definitely uh, patriotic citizens. It's people that just love where they've been and where they've grown up and they're passionate about Senegal. Um, if we can include the councillors and they, get, they buy in, um, it, it'll be great. You know, we cannot, really, we cannot do this process if we don't have cooperation between community and, and the, and the councillors. Yesterday's program, it was there for constructive discussions. And out of that, I think leaders were born, leaders were realized. And we are going to take this program forward from there. Well, I think um, uh, you can see for yourself there's a progress there. And I'd like to open it up for any questions from anybody who wants to ask John um, anything that might uh, enable them to take similar steps in their towns. Or anybody who's got a comment. It seems like Gage has got a um, hands up, um, Paul. Yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah, yeah, Gerish. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Gerish. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, John and uh, and Paul. Really, really, really encouraging. Um, please see my my little note on the chat there. Um, I'm audible, Numbang. Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, please see my comment on uh, uh, my experience with Rwanda. Uh, really, really fascinating. And since 1994, uh, they've really jumped milestones in getting things going. And, and maybe this is a, a recording that you should start to make uh, to show uh, in 10 years' time where have we landed with Senegal in, in this way. Uh, John, one uh, thought that comes to my mind, and, and that is how do we, or um, and I think it's kind of mixed in some way, but to, to separate issue-based discussion and uh, planning with the municipality, with the citizens in another space. So, so that's how I see collaboration in two different folds where we need to focus. And so the advancement of issue base can lead into planning, so to speak. Yeah. But yeah. if we start to separate them, this makes absolute sense that we 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 on a trajectory that we want to work together with the municipal administration and the political bearers in, in that way. Thanks. Thank you, Girish. Good comment there. Yeah, uh, and Girish is also working with Salga on on a collaborative toolkit as well, which is also quite an interesting project. And we'll get him to talk here one of these days on his project. I think that would make sense. Uh, uh, can we take Sarah Sarah's comments and then then John, you can respond. Thank you, Chair. My name is Sarah Mott. I'm based in Pumalanga province. I founded what is called a peace eco village. It's called Umpagazi Peace Eco Village. I would like to share in one of the you know stakeholder or the forums, the sessions, an, an ecological um, uh, you know, approach on how to deal with all social ills in communities, 
for 10 years I've worked for the Foundation for Human Rights as a manager for vulnerable groups. And now with an experience of the eco villages uh, lived in many countries where communities are intentional about how to deal with the you know local economic issues, social issues of you know diversity, conflict, uh, you know tolerance to the you know architecture, the green architecture which is friendly to the climate conditions we live in, uh, and then the participation and the world view, uh, you know, borrowing from the fact that what we're doing, we cannot be uh, in isolation with other communities elsewhere in the world that are doing the same towards saving the planet from all, you know, the human to human conflicts to the human to nature conflicts that we currently find ourselves in. Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. Yeah. I'll, I'll share my, my details uh, on the chat. Yeah, and I think, Sarah, thanks for that input. And also share your stuff with uh, Noble as well. Um, uh, uh, that will, you can then respond to the sort of invitation email as well, because we'd love to hear more about that. Yes. John, would you like to comment on, on Girish and, and Sarah's um, comments? Yeah, yeah, Paul, especially with um, Girish. I think that is that is the key, um, because what we have also realized there in Senegal, um you know, you also need to build that relationship with the municipality. Of course, there are also dynamics there and um, there's an issue of trust. Um, municipality or the governments is also very much politically, um, um, in a sense, driven. So any initiative that comes from the, from the community, it can always be seen as a potential political um, competition. So it takes time for them to really open up. But what we have done here is to really um, try to walk the road with them. And, and I think now, Paul, they're much better, even though we expecting them to get more involved. Uh, but especially when you come, every time when you come close to the elections, it's very difficult to, 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 to work with, uh, you know, with the government because of those perceptions. But I, we, we, we are lucky enough that, um, you know, the, 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 the mayor, the new mayor that came in uh, was somebody that was also coming from a, a civil, civil society community movement. So she understands the dynamics and she's very open. She understands the importance of uh, the civil society involvement in governance. So we hope that um, that can actually um, uh, the relationship can grow further because we can achieve so much if we can get the buy-in of the government. Um, in fact, the, the, the legislation actually allows the community participation. It's just that sometimes, um, you know, most of the communities are not empowered in this line. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I definitely agree with Gerich on that one. We need yeah. to collaborate on all sides. Yeah, and I think it's one of the exciting things, John, and that's why, from a Kahisa perspective, we keep beating the drum in the government sector as well, because we have to shift behavior change there so that government can match community and community can match government. Uh, where we find synergy there, I think anything's possible, and you've demonstrated that. But uh, if, 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 if John, uh, would you like to come in and ask uh, and comment? Johan, sorry. Thank you, Paul. Um, John, I heard you mention the prayer day, and I just want to know your, your view sort of on the role of faith-based organizations moving past just the prayer days. Um, how do you think they can play, because they are an important sector, um, how do you think you, they can play, um, as I say, a bigger role than just the prayer days, for example? Yeah. That's a that's a fantastic question, uh, Johan. I'm I'm glad you asked that one because <laughs> I'm very passionate about it. In fact, um, what I'm doing now, um, you know, as as a full time base, is to really mobilize those faith um, organization to get involved because um, you know the faith communities, uh, the churches, and it doesn't matter really what the faith they are very close and connected with communities and they can play a pivotal role in, in, in uh, especially in, in in the communication also between the government and the and the and the society or the community um, but also 
um, they do have resources to affect change in, in, in these communities. So they've got more role than just to pray, just to pray. And that's what we are actually doing. Try to mobilize them and and help them and to say, you know, this is where you can actually start. You already have part of the community that is part of your, your community there as, as a faith. And how do you use, you know, the, the, the energy that these people bring? How do you use that energy to empower them as well? So the, the, the role of faith community is, is huge in terms of building collaboration um, even between the societies and between communities, but also uh, being um, co-creating with, with, with all the stakeholders. So we just have to get out of that um, belief, um, Johan, that uh, our role is only to pray and our role, you know, is only to um, maybe to advise, and some of the some of these people they only see their role as only to advise the government, but we can actually become active. In fact, a lot of faith communities and churches have have been so so much um, active in 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 the communities, but also I think there there's, there needs to be a collaboration because. Um, we most of most of the churches are actually functioning in silos. You know, is my church doing this, and I don't want anybody to be involved in that. And I think we need to um, expand our our horizon a bit to say who are also people that we can hold hands. It doesn't matter whether they are part of our faith or not, but if it comes to the community, uh, we must to be we must be able to collaborate. Oh, thanks, thanks very much, John. Inspirational. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Johan. Thanks. Well, uh, if, if there's no more comment or or questions, I think there's a lot of food for thought there for all of us and the role that we play and how we pitch up every day to make a difference. So, John, you're an inspiration to all of us, and we want to just thank you and and wish you a uh, good will, goodwill on all the work that you do for Time to Rise, et cetera, across the country and bringing communities together. Thank you very much. Um, at this point here, I just want to take us on to the next item on the agenda, which is another great story. Um, and this one comes from Picketburg in the, uh, up the West Coast. And, uh, and this is another um, project that... Uh, as part of the small town rejuvenation strategy uh, with site plan. And uh, and we, we were invited down there and were and attended with sort of long teeth, not sure what to expect. And uh, when we got there, we were very pleasantly surprised. So what I'm going to do before I ask Marie to join, um, I'm just going to play a short video and then she can come on and give us all the meaty stuff about who, why, what, when, and how. So just hang on a second, I will be sharing. Tell me if you have a sound problem again, please.
a real good time. I feel alive. And the world is turning inside out. Yeah, I'm floating around in ecstasy. So, come here, give me some, give me some, give me Cause I'm having a good time, having a good time. Well, it's been, it's been a it's been a long time since I've been at an event and come away with a really warm feeling. And so at this point, I'd like to um, invite Marie, who is the organizer and planner and doer of this whole thing, just to share with us some of the, the background and the reasons why and what it means for the Picketburg community to embark on this uh, street party. Maria, will, it, uh, will you join us? Uh, um, are you there still? I'm here, yes, I'm here. Great. Can you put on your camera or not? You know what? I, I've i been looking all over the screen where I can't find a place where to switch well, it on. I don't well, know. In that case, we're happy to just listen to you. <laughs> okay, great. Sorry, Thanks. Maybe. Go ahead. Maybe it's better that you can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, thank you so much for this opportunity. I just want to put something straight um, immediately. I'm not the organizer. I'm just part of the whole team that organizes this this event and it's not a huge project like John's project um, it's an event we have once a year but it, it is as you saw now on the on the photos and the video it is absolutely <laughs> thanks John I see that yeah it's an amazing event we um let me quickly just tell you um I am the chairperson of a welfare organization in town called Badisa I, I think most of you have heard of Badisa um, Badisa, the name Badisa came from the three Afrikaans words, which is Baram Hartigheid, Deans, and Psalm. We, we serve our community together. That's what Badisa is all about. But it's a welfare organization. And we started with this event in 2019, just before COVID. We had the first one. And it was actually our area manager, uh, Mr. Alec. America who came up with this idea because he saw it um, in Stillby. Now Stillby, that Badisa, Badisa um, office um, had an, a similar event. They, in town, in Stillby, I haven't been there, I haven't seen it, but they say there's a bridge that actually connects the, the two parts of town. I don't know the, the area's names. And they had a similar event where they had people sitting around one table having dinner or supper together. And that's where he came up with the idea. He came to Piketberg and he said, Badisa, don't you want to pick it? Does Badisa Piketberg, don't you want to do this? So we started, we had our first one in 19, um, 2019. And then for two years, we couldn't because of COVID. And then this, uh, we had one last year. And this year was the third one. Obviously, as it grows, as the, as the ideas grow, and people hear of all these things and see the photos and a video like this, which is amazing. People want to get involved. So, but the basic idea, the very basic idea is just that people, in this case, 300 piquet burgers, sit around a table and have supper together. And we organized a nice program. As you saw, we had an amazing MC and he asked questions and we had a program uh, all around that. So uh, we sold tickets, 40 Rand. It did, it's not uh, for any, um, you know, to, do, to uh, have any funds available. It was just to, it just covered the food. Let me put it that way. Um, everything was donated, most of it. And we just had a, a, a fun time. 300 piquet burgers in one street. We closed the street down. The traffic officers and people helped us. We closed the street down. We put the tables down. We decorated. And we made the food. And we had a very nice program with some um, people singing. And our, our municipal manager 
uh, told us about the small town regeneration program in Phuket Park. So that was some good news. And we just had a wonderful time. And the feedback is just amazing. So we didn't know that Kajisa, Kajisa or anyone else was going to be there, but I'm glad that you enjoyed it. <laughs> and we will make sure to invite you next time. And, and, and the feedback we got was, why only 300? Why not 600? So we said, okay, we'll make it 600 people. <laughs> but the logistics is not always that easy. But it's really the, the feedback is so amazing that we will really look into, you know, growing this event. But it is a very, very special event. Um, it's community-based. It's social community development. It's to get Piquet Bergers together. And it is amazing. It's amazing. We have a wonderful mountain. I don't know. Piquet Berg, our mountain is also called Piquet Berg. So with that view of Piquet Berg, there in the street with three, surrounded by 300 other Piquet Bergers, what, what more do you need? It was just really amazing. So yes, if, uh, any questions, I'll try and answer. <laughs> Sorry, I can't hear. I think you're on. No, uh, all I can say, it was a very authentic event. There was no pretenses from anybody. Oh. And it was the municipality, uh, councillors and officials. It was the community of uh, uh, Picketberg in its entirety. It was simple. There was no fancy stuff. but no. And everyone had a smile on their face, which was amazing. John, maybe this is something you can try in Senegal. I think we need to do something like that. <laughs> um, would anybody like to, Estelle, you would like to add something? Yes, thank you. Um, I've also got some load shedding issues. So for bandwidth, I'm not going to share my screen uh, or show my face. Um, I think it would be lovely if Marie can just maybe also explain where, I mean, she explained the, the background to it and where it came from, the idea from, 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 uh, what's the place that you called it? Still by. Uh, still by. Am I right? So, but yeah, but I mean, there was a, there was a certain event that w happened in town that uh, paved the way for this to happen. And that's why you're doing it specifically in Kalandula Street. I think maybe, Marie, if you can just give a little bit of background around that as well, would be great. Thanks. Oh, yes, you mean why it was specifically in Kalandula? Now, Kalandula is a brand, it's not a brand new street, but a part of it was there was an extension build. Um, of Kalandula Street, and, and uh, it's actually paved, Kalandula Street, if you don't mind. So that's why we decided Kalandula Street lies in the middle of what we call uh, Piquet, uh, Boerdorp and Onerdorp. Um, and that's why we decided to have it in a street that connects those two parts of town. Um, and it lies uh, next to the graveyard and, and next to our hospital. There's a lot of um, uh, significant... Uh, things surrounding Kalandula Street. So we call it Kalandula Strat Friedskapstafel Yette. That's one word in Afrikaans, if you don't mind. Um, but <laughs> that's, why, that's why it was held in or is held in Kalandula Street. Amazing. Uh, John? Yes, well done, Marie. Um, yes, that's something. <laughs> That's something that I, uh, it really fascinates me because I know, um, you know, food and table is so powerful to connect people. And it's one of those things, the tools that really brings people. It doesn't matter who you are. That's why I also mentioned the the Bri and, uh, you know, Chisanyama and stuff like that. So well done on that. Um, and I just want to make a comment also, I've written it on the, um, you know, on the on the message is there that 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 word basadi is actually a Sutu word also meaning shepherds, and that is very heavy. You know, you know, bringing people together as a shepherd is also you know bringing people together. But I want to I want to hear from you because I see you've got different community there. You know, the colored community also involved. Um, did you have? leaders and people who of influence that can actually bring that because I see there's actually a very good balance of the community. You know, it's not either way. So how did you do it? How did you get to 
uh, both communities to buy into this, into this vision? Uh, John, uh, you will be very glad to hear my answer. Re uh, it was we, uh, Badisa, Badisa, and yes, we know of that of that word. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing. It's just it just worked out that way because it's a combination of Afrikaans words, but it act actually has a, an amazing um, meaning in in your language. Um, we, Badisa is um, supported mainly by two. Uh, churches, the Dutch Reformed Church and the uh, uh, United. Um, so we we start there. We start there at the, those two churches. Those people, the two, two churches, get uh, tickets to sell. So we start there. But then obviously you can invite anyone, a piquet burger that stays in piquet bar. Anyone, you can sell your tickets to anyone, but we started with those two churches. And yes, part of our program that was really amazing, we invited, I think there were about five different um, uh, preachers, reverends, duomenes of different churches in Piketberg, and they actually, you you saw on the photos, it was amazing, they, they prayed for the community. So we started our whole event in prayer. So yes, I believe, we believe that if you start there, then then it must be a success. Why won't why won't prayers be answered, just like in your case? Well, I suppose, uh, thanks, Marie. I suppose that also answers Johan's question. So what else can faith-based organizations do yes. other than pray for community? You can organize events like this that brings people together. And that's the that's the real beauty of it. And you know the interesting thing for everybody, the difference between Senegal and Piketberg is quite quite important to recognize. So it was interesting in in Piketberg, for example, they are one of the top, better performing municipalities in the country. And however, one of their complaints as a municipality is that the community can sometimes be complacent about issues because. The municipality generally steps up to the plate, whereas in Senegal, the municipality is still coming on board and the community forums overtaken them in many ways. And so the dynamics is very different. And so what Picketburg has to work on is different to what Senegal has to work on as a, as a community and a municipality. So but but nevertheless, it's, it's interesting in both those instances, you find a common cause that brings people together which is around uh, a, a good life and prosperity for all, which drives the process. Are there any other comments or on, on both those case studies that we, we can learn from? Anybody else? Estelle? Yeah, sorry. I just like, I remember that dinner was so lovely and it there was so much laughter and just the, the whole experience um, there of people having fun together. And um, the one thing that stood out for me from that Kalandula dinner, Marie, was that it created a sense of belonging, of people belonging to the town. And, and we did ask people, what do they love about their town um, during that evening? For Because for us, it was um, interesting to hear, what do people love about their town? And in all cases, it was the people. Yeah. And in Senegal, uh, John, we also asked the same question. And in Siena Cal, it was also that the thing that people love about their town is the people. And for me, the takeaway from, from both of these towns and just listening to John and listening to Marie is the key takeaway is that it's a sense of belonging that's being created in these towns. People want to make a difference and they realize that change don't have to happen to them, that they can be part of the change but they also need a place where they can start. And we, uh, like a, a, an Afrikaans, we would say, um, so I think it's it's lovely that both of these towns are creating an opportunity for a sense of belonging and creating opportunities for people to become involved and to get involved and to, and to, and to foster that community uh, feeling and specifically to work with the people in their town. So that was just a, a takeaway from both of these for me. Thank you. 
No, great takeaway, Estelle. Yeah, and it doesn't matter how big or how small the event is, if it's moving things in the right direction, it's really important. Yeah, very good. Well, great, Marie. Thanks so much for for make, giving up your time and and joining us. Um, we really enjoyed both those stories from you and John, and uh, we're hoping that this can be uh, duplicated in other towns. We certainly are, are advocating for that in in our little towns, just to to give people some form of hope and and create a platform where people can shake hands and get to know each other a little better than they do at the moment. Great. So I think the uh, the last uh, um, point we're going to move on to um, is, uh, I think, Nobo, if you can just give us some feedback um, on the on the uh, Finnish embassy project and uh, and what's going on there. And then I think we can go to general and uh, and then we'll close. Thanks, Nobo. Carry on. Okay, thank you. But maybe before we move on, I think I see Gerish um, has said um, has left a comment um, for Estelle saying social cohesion is critical, especially when we can plan together and understand each other's hands. So I just wanted to oh, read it out for for those who might have missed it. And thanks so much. I think that this has been such an interesting um, conversation than just listening to what has been happening in Picardburg as well as Senegal and how communities are actually organizing themselves is quite inspirational. And I think that from um, the TAN perspective is that this year we almost had something similar um, through the Change Makers um, Festival. Unfortunately, they um, we, did, we none of them were able to um, join us today, but I think that they are is also of a similar nature of how um, different individuals, again, a church, a member from church is involved um, within that particular space in, in organizing communities. So on the 4th of November, there was a um, Change Makers Festival whereby it was more intergenerational. You, the, the community was brought together. Um, there was a talent show whereby people came, sang, danced. It was just a very beautiful and joyous kind of moment. And it was it was great that through the funding that we have as TAN, we were able to kind of sponsor the food. So um, in order, um, so a lot of the children that were already there, nobody kind of felt left out and stuff because the community is a little bit um, poorer in Fernandadal. A lot of them already knew that you were coming there. There's a hot dog that's waiting for you, um, a, ginger, a ginger ale that you can easily access and some fruit. And then for the fact that that was also organized by by um, the, the, the change makers that are found in the area was quite inspirational. So as the stories were being shared, I just realized that different communities have these different ways of bringing um, people together. And I think that the Change Makers Festival was one way. They did a whole competition on netball as well. So um, when I attended, I had a fun time. I left there quite excited. It's as if I won the talent show, but no, I didn't. Somebody else did. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to share that because, I mean, you, 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 it, um, when it comes to how civil society or organizations even um, kind of put to together communities, it's always inspirational because sometimes you just think it's about the marching, but then it's more than that. It's actually speaking to the people and the human aspect of it. And that is the biggest takeaway that I have right now and how that becomes the change that is required to see more. With that very long um, sharing of, uh, of the story, um, I just wanted to maybe give an update on um, the Finnish embassy. For So for those who don't know, um, the Towns Action Network has um, got some funding from the Finnish embassy to support some of the activities and the initiatives that are taking place. And we and the Change Makers Festival, for instance, is one of those projects and programs that we have um, funded. And obviously, we want to also utilize these gatherings to kind of um, share with a wider audience and a wider network. So we want to grow. So if you do, so whatever it is that you kind of have, we, we kind of share through the network, please share with other people that are like-minded. Um, and then, um, yeah, and I think that's just it. The, the Finnish embassy has given Tan some, some money to kind of um, execute some of the initiatives and support some of the initiatives. We've supported a few um, Change Makers Festival, story writing workshops, 
stop, as well as the um, Forgotten Highway, um, whereby there was a visitation on different museums. And we are going to be having more gatherings and we are going to be having more activities. So we are looking forward to the participation. And if you do have some ideas and you do want to share with us what you are doing in your space, please feel free to contact me um, and connect with me. And then in that way, we can then be able to know where we can plug you in within the program. And this has been a very, very um, exciting, inspirational session. And um, I can't wait to kind of learn more about the work that is being done by various organizations and also to work with um, the, with John and, and Marie as well. Hopefully there could be some potential of um, forming more active part of the Transaction Network because it's people like you guys that are actually motivations or inspirations for this network to be in existence. And those lessons are very useful lessons that can be shared and that can make a difference to other small towns or other communities that have similar kind of struggles. So I think that would be me from my side. And yeah. Well, I think Maria and John, we, we invite you to become members of the TAN network and share the TAN network with your networks. Um, we we meet once a quarter uh, uh, like this, just to share stories. We're going to create a digital asset management system uh, that's going to be available to, to all members down the line. Uh, so that we can record and and uh, save the rich content we have that others can watch after we've we've uh, had our uh, our meetings. Um, so yeah, please feel free to 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 join the network. We'd love to have you on board. Um, oh, sorry. Can I just? To add um, that the this recording will actually be online. Um, quite soon. I think as soon as Zoom gives me, I'll just do a few cleaning up and then we will post it on our on our, on the TAN website as well as on Uyukesa. But that will be something that I can share with everyone post um this particular meeting um, with the links and everything. Yeah, thank you, Nobo. And I think uh, the next time what we may, may consider doing is, is bringing the unmuting civil society information to the network as well. I think that's going to be quite important stuff to share. It's gaining momentum. Um, and I'd like to open this up for anybody who wants to share events that are taking place in their spaces in the near future or um, or something, a story they want to tell about something that's happened in their uh, community. Please do so, so, do so now. Well, it would look like uh, um, there's no sharing to be done after uh, the meeting. So, Nobo, if you are comfortable, um, I'm happy to um, conclude and shut yes. down the meeting. And thank everybody for your attendance. And uh, we won't see you until the New Year. So have a great December, a good, well-earned rest, all of you. You'll come back all looking a bit younger next year after your <laughs> 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 so thank you everybody uh we look forward to seeing you next year yeah thank you, thank you so much paul also for holding and organizing yeah. this this yeah. was special thank you guys thank you nobo and paul and everybody thank um, you thank you well. thank yes. you everybody goodbye bye thank bye. You. bye yeah thanks a lot john much appreciate your time thanks Bye -bye. Will, you, will you hang around just for a second? Okay. Yeah. Sarah's staying with us, I see. Oh, she's uh, gone. No, I just removed her. I oh, did. You? <laughs> so, was that fun? That was really, that was wonderful. I enjoyed it tremendously and I felt like I learned so much. Oh, uh, I had a lot of sparking ideas because also I think from this, for me was um, a few topics that we could actually cover as for articles. You know, there's there's yeah. a lot of things that have come, come across um, um, through this. I mean, thinking about 
the role of faith-based organizations within yeah. small towns and stuff. So I think that that would be a nice article to have because that is a nice base yeah. to yeah. then kind of attract and grow our network. I loved yeah. um, that particular that particular theme. I also think that the theme um, which might need me and you to work more collaboratively on is the one about civil um, civil society's involvement within governance. And then yeah. for us also to just scoping out why is it that there's there's um there's that gap with um with um getting and connecting with municipalities? So using the examples um and the comparison between Bigetberg and Senegal and the complacency of either or side yeah. when one side is is uh, is actionable, yeah. I think that that would be such a key resource to then yeah. extrapolate from this particular gathering. Yeah. So I think yeah. can when it comes to the lessons and stuff. So that could be good material for the newsletter. So yeah. when we are just now reflecting and thinking about these things, that yeah. that becomes. I loved it. I. Yeah, there's there's uh, one thing I'm looking forward to is because uh, on that question about how does civil society connect with government, you know that there's a there's a gap there that needs to be closed. Uh -huh. And so when I finished my presentation at the Solga conference, the CEO, which is the chief operations guy. Um, who runs all of Solgo's operations, came to me and said, this collaboration model is simple and generic enough. He would like to programmatize it and roll oh. it out next year so that we can start talking to government the same mm. way we're talking to town action network people. So if yeah. we can in the next one, I'll try and see if he's available. Um, and if we've concluded that arrangement, then at least we can get some commitment at a national level that that capacitation yeah. of government throughout the country is going to take place in some way or other around yeah. yeah. No, that, that sounds brilliant, yeah. actually, because yeah. I think, yeah, this is exciting. Um, I'm going to be writing up um, just a report on this and just getting um, getting that ready. But this this was very, um, very useful. I think that the presenters were also very great. And I think that they yeah. captured the essence of small towns and how to even think about problems and solutions yeah. Yeah. collaboratively. Yeah. So, yeah, I was very, Thanks. very inspired so thank you for right. that and That's and i'm great. looking for i just think that there's potential for us to even get more from this that we can share with our network in bite yes. sizes yeah. of case studies or just a small article and then this yeah. becomes things that we can share much more um much more actively with our networks yeah. that sounds great and we just get the numbers up i suppose yeah yeah i think that's the thing so uh, i forgot i need to sorry 